again. Can you hear me? You can? Iffy. Let's go up a little bit. Don't go too far. I'm not as young as I used to be. I can't listen to loud music anymore. First of all, giving honor to God, the creator and maker of all things, and everyone's here today who is a part of what God has going on today. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank all the participants. I enjoy that selection. That was like right nice. Okay. We have to add that one one more time. Okay. And that one, that's the one that'll do it for us. Um, before we begin, I have to greet you. Happy Sabbath. Shabbat Shalom. Okay. I want to do that one more time. And because right there, it's like, eh, okay. So let's make sure that we have some enthusiasm as we do this. Because we serve a mighty God. Okay. So you can't come and be in God's presence and you have a lackluster attitude. That is not going to work. Okay, because if you're not happy, like all outdoors, why are you in his presence? Okay, so let's do that one more time. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Amen. All right, now I feel better. Okay, so, so let's go to God and uh, ask his blessings on our service today. Father God, I come to you right now as your humble servant. I thank you, Father, for trusting me for this day. But I ask that you would just utilize me as the vessel that you want to get your message through. Father, we're going through a lot in this world right now. And right now, everybody's feelings is all over the place. But Father, we know that you are a mighty God. We know that everything can change by one word from you. So help us as we learn how to become closer to you. Help us as we Continue on with the mission that you have set forth and help us, Father, to be the vessels that you use to bring others closer to you. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, last week, uh, whether you, well, let's go here. Whether you know it or not, uh, I have been soliciting knowledge for some of the elders here. I'm trying to grow. Okay? I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to be the best person that I can be. One of the elders asked me to watch something. And I took it on like that was homework. Okay, that was homework. Okay, because it had a message where we are getting so distracted as individuals and a church to where we're all over the place. And we are neglecting what we're talking about in Sabbath school the message. The message. I beg your pardon? The mission, missing, message, same thing. Okay? Because the mission is to get the message out, right? 
Okay, so baby, I'm in I'm, I'm there. Okay, come on now. But hey, 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 you know I love her. Uh -huh. But the thing is, as we listen to our news, which sometimes is the worst thing we can do, I was reading yesterday to where there have been over 255 mass shootings in America this year. Meaning that we've had more mass shootings than days of this year. We talk about what's going on in Israel right now. Now, I have to put this disclaimer out here. I'm a student of history. I love history. Okay. We are continuing to pray for Israel, aren't we? Now, I have one question. Are we also praying for Palestine? Are we? Because right now, the people that I talk to on the street and even at my job, sure, we're in the middle of prophecy. But a lot of people don't even know the history of Israel right now. They don't know. They don't know that in 19... 19, the Belfort document was created. They don't know that at that time, the British government was trying to get in control of the Suez Canal during World War I. The Ottomans controlled all of that at that time. Britain went to the Palestinians and asked them for help to get rid of the Ottomans. Now, when they went and asked for this help, they promised the Palestinians all of that land. See, we don't even really know what this war is all about. They promised the Palestinians all that land. When they ran the Ottomans out of that region, most of the British that was wealthy, well-to-do, started buying up the land. Sometimes we don't even know that the Rothschilds owned half that land in Israel. Over 90,000 acres. We don't know that. We don't know that all those Palestinians were being displaced into Gaza and into the West Bank. We don't know that. We don't know that those sections were and are basically concentration camps with fences all around it, barbed wire and razor wire. We don't know that. Okay? They promised the Palestinians that land. The Palestinians got mad because they were naked. Okay? And you can, all you have to do is look it up. Like I said, I'm a student of history. I became a student of spiritual history after reading the Great Controversy. Okay? Because all of this is all tied in. Sure, it's prophecy. I am not saying that it's not. But what I am saying, do we know why we are attaching ourselves to all of these different movements? Do we understand that our job as Christians 
is to continue to carry on the mission that God set for. We have a story to tell the world. But yet, here it, all, here it is, and I've said this in here before, we got all of this going on on the left, we got all of this going on on the right, and it's still the same bird. We think we are attaching ourselves to all of these different truths, but it's still the same. It is nothing different here. So as I was preparing for this week, I came to this. Sometimes when we get caught up in everything in the world, what happens? We get so distracted that we lose our hope. We lose who we are. We become a part of a movement. But the only movement we should be a part of right now is the movement of God. The only thing that we need to be concerned about right now is what Christ was concerned about when he got here. He said he didn't come to call the righteous. He came to call people like me. We still have a job to do. There's a lot of individuals out here like me. There's individuals out here to where we have to get rid of being in our comfort zone to teach everybody about the love of Christ. We have to be. If we attach ourselves to all of these different movements, who's going to get the message out? Right? I mean, think about this. He trusts us to do the work. Why do you think he gave us this mission? We're talking about a living hope. I was real shocked when he put this on my mind. And he did this before I even knew I had this sermon to do. Hope. Hope that's alive. This is, this is not just something that's just sitting here on this podium. It is alive. I was looking for some little tidbits for today. And I looked up the word hope. Sometimes we think about it and we already know what, you know, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says. But this is what I found. It said, hope is an opportunistic, uh, optimistic state of mind that is based on an expectation of positive outcomes with respect to events and circumstances in one's life or the world at large. Now, as a verb... This definition includes expect with confidence and to cherish a desire with anticipation. As a Christian, where is your anticipation should be? What is your expectation? I don't know about you. Mine is when he cracked that sky, he tells me and I can hear, well done. So I can be there with him. That's my hope. That's my expectation. I can't say and I don't speak for everybody. I don't even try to sway your minds. But I do try to give you something to ponder. Where are we? What is the goal? Is the goal to sit on our laurels and the blessings that he's bestowed upon us and just stay in our comfort zone and not try to help somebody else get there? 
At least we can put it out there. What's wrong with just giving them the message? What's wrong with just showing Christian sensibilities to those around us? We know what's going on in the world. But I do know this. My God has always been faithful. He gave me grace before he even allowed me to actually see who he was. What do you think he's trying to do to the rest of these out here? Why do you think he's not here yet? Because he's still out here trying to save someone's life. We are, like I said, we're all over the place. We only hang out with what we, people with like minded. This is why I love my job. I know I'm in there fighting a battle. But if I just reach one, I've done my job. And I'm not there trying to reach one. I'm greedy. I want more. Okay? I'm just going to be honest. I want more. Because even out here, people have choices. We know the world is evil, right? Evil all around us. But if we don't give the message, that evil all is going to do is just permeate and continue to grow and continue to grow and it's going to start taking up just like a sponge take up water it's going to just start taking up everybody same thing happens at my job this is every day I had four individuals overdose this past week on my job Every time I look up, PMT is there. Fighting all day, every day. Because Satan do not want these individuals to change their lives. Now, the only reason why it's so prevalent right there, because it's so concentrated. It's a city behind gates. It's another Gaza. That's all it is. But the same thing is happening out here and we're walking around like we're free. Are we really free? Are we really understanding what our freedom pertains to? Are we really ready to preach and teach the love of Christ so others can see what we see? Are we ready to do that? We have to understand Satan, and I say that name with a little s, he don't care who he killed. He's just trying to kill you. And as we step back from the mission that we're supposed to be in, what do you think is happening? If we don't do the work, and I am not saying this is work encompassing. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if we don't do what we were meant to do, what happens? This is deeper than anybody thinks. And if we're not looking at this and we're not trying to actually do what is right, I don't care what the right say or the left. That has nothing to do with the price of butter for me. I was blessed. Somebody continue to talk to me to help me change my life. 
I can't do nothing less. I don't know how. I don't know how. First of all, because I know my God is a miracle worker. I know he is. And I can say that with a smile. That's a living hope to me. I know what he can do. I know he can change your circumstances. I know that he loves you and he loves me with an everlasting love. I know when you fall down, he will pick you up. You come at him with a pure heart, what is he going to do? He's going to be the God that you already know he is. He's going to pick you up, dust you off, and hey, the mission is still the same. You don't sit, get ready to kick back just because you, you did that. The mission is still the same. It is us going out here in this world to show the love of Christ. Christ told us, as we look at him, we actually see the Father, right? At least that's what my Bible says. And if your Bible is not telling you that, I don't know what Bible you're looking at. And in fact, please don't tell me because I don't even want to read that one. I need you to know that this hope is real. Okay? My notes say, this living hope is our hope of salvation that includes an imperishable inheritance. It's the new life that we have in Christ. And that's something that can never be taken away. In fact, it will be even more glorious when, once we reach that eternal state. We have something to hope for. We have something that we can actually feel and reach. And mind you, this is still First Peter chapter 1, verse 3, 4, and 5. We have that. Why don't we live in this? It has definite characteristics. There's an eternal hope, a sure hope, and an enduring hope. Now, with that word enduring hope, you know what, you know what, comes to my mind that all I have to do is have that belief and then God is going to keep increasing that belief because I'm already seeing and understanding the blessings that he's given me. That means I never lose that hope because my mind and my heart is steadily directed at him. So that means whatever's going on in this world, I still have that. I'm still able to utilize that to help somebody else. Because remember, your blessings don't belong to you. If you continue to sit up on your blessings, it's just like a cup of water. Once that cup gets full, if you're not pouring that water out, how can any more water get in there? God is not trying to have his hands so tied up to where he cannot continue to bless you. I heard it like this once before. 
blessings come from here, come here, and go here. It's just like the circle of life. Always water running. Water running. I'm not just having my soul watered, but he's watering my soul so I can water somebody else's. We need to get to the seriousness of what's going on. Otherwise, we're going to miss this boat. And I'm not trying to lose. I played the losing game for a long time. I am not trying to lose out. I told my class the other day. And mind you, continue to pray for my class. I have individuals that actually seeking this information with everything that they got to the point that they are actually ostracized on the yard. The only friends that they have is those who really claim to be Christians. Okay? So, I was having this conversation with them and I told them this is what I this is what I want to do. I want to meet each and every one of them. Okay? As we are right there by the crystal sea. We look up and we see the tree. We see the tree on both sides of this life-giving water. We see the tree. I want to be able to pick off that tree with my class. I don't want that. That is my goal. To be able to pick off that tree and I am eating life-giving fruit. I don't have to worry about what I'm going to eat tomorrow. All I got to do is just take a couple bites. And I am not just full, but I am nourished and my mind is clear. Oh, man. Can't you feel that? Can't you feel that? Let's look at this. This is real. God is real. Seeing God through the works of Christ is real. And Christ said that we as a people can do just as much as he did. We have to stay connected and believe. We have to continue to hope in the fact that God said, I will always be there. My Lord said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's what he said. And I don't care nothing about what nobody else is talking about. I believe in his promises. Okay? I believe in his promises. And I know for sure that he's not going to give you a task and he's going to let you go out there and fail. If he give you the task to do, if you trust in him, there's going to be success. My God is not a failure. My God will never turn his back on you. Everybody asks me, how do I feel walking in a penitentiary and I'm at, on the highest level yard out there? You know how I feel? I'm blessed. I'm not worried about what somebody can do for me. Why? Do you want to wear your, your, uh, your bulletproof vest? No. I can't move in that. And in the summertime, it's too hot. And it's, uh, it's tacky. And it don't go with my clothes. Okay? I got an image to uphold. 
But the thing is, is that if I start depending on man to put protection on me, what does that say about how I feel about my God? Just don't work like that. God told me to keep it simple. So why am I trying to put more on it than what it is? He's already told me, wait, let me see something. Let me, let, let me, let me go here. Have y'all ever read the end of this book? Who wins? Okay. Who wins? Okay. Now, do Christ talk to you in this book? I know he talked to me. You know how? Those letters are red. I know what he's trying to tell us. He's already won this battle. Why are we going off to the left, going off to the right? Why are we doing this? Why can't we just stay focused and get the work done? That's what this is. This is living within this living hope. We have the hope. We already know what's going to happen. Why am I going to change my mindset? That is not going to work. There are people out here who was truly seeking. And if we don't do the work, if we become afraid to actually put our testimonies out there, and sometimes I have to admit, because I go through it, people try to take advantage of you. But the one thing that I've learned in my life, I don't trust me. I don't trust me. I trust him to take care of me. That's the way to continue to live within this hope that he has given us. Think about that. We didn't come on this on our own. See, yeah, see, sometimes, sometimes we get so egotistical that we didn't ran up on this. No, he gave that hope to us. Everything that we're about as a Christian came from, through him. We didn't do that. We don't have the wherewithal to seek that. We don't have the wherewithal to even hold on to it. It's only him. So why are we getting caught up in all these different movements? And think about it. Satan has always had a counterfeit for everything godly. Don't think he's not trying to counterfeit prophecy. If he can get you to bite the apple over here when the living fruit is right here, what do you think he's going to do? He wants you to go to the 42 fake. Now, mind you, let me tell you what the 42 fake is. 42 fake is a football analogy where you turn around, you hand the ball off to one of the running backs, okay? He pretends like he's going into this hole, but then he's coming back over here. You know about that. Okay, the 42 fake. That's what Satan is trying to do to us. Let's stay focused. Let's stay dedicated to the word. And like I, like I was explaining to my wife this morning, God took my, he took this sermon and spun it on me this morning. I got my own, I, I had everything all arranged. He spun it on me this morning. Why? Because he knows 
how fragile we are as Christians, even though we say we love him. We need to get back to what's real. Okay? That's the only way we get home. We need to get back. Man cannot do this for us. Understanding man's motives is not going to do this for us. Man's motives do not have your best interest in mind. There's something always that's mixing it up. We act like we're going to be okay. But there's always an interior motive. We got to get back to what's real. The love of God is real. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. Okay. Now I'm going to leave you with this because I can talk all day today. Okay. Because this is something that we as individuals and as a church family we need to get to basics. We need to understand there's a job out here and regardless of what's going on in the world we still have a job to do. And don't think, like I say, this world has nothing to do with you. This is going to go on. My God said it was going to go on. My God said it was going to be troubling times. And we haven't even hit it yet. We're just in the baby troubling times. The baby part of this. We haven't even been in a situation where now you must make a choice. We're not there yet. It's coming. But if we don't practice what we're supposed to do right now, how can we get over when that happens? How can we? We have to condition ourselves. Faith can only grow as you continue to do those things that help us to grow. Your hope can only grow as it's connected to your faith by the goodness that God is showing you and he's uplifting you. He's dusting you off. He's showing you. Even though the increase is not mine, He's still showing you and he's giving you that peace to know you did okay today. Just don't let your head get big. Just remember who you are. You're my child. Okay, so as I get ready to close this, I have something that one of my favorite authors wrote about end times. And it says, the Christian should never array before his imagination all the trials which may occur before the end of this race. He has but to begin to serve God and each day live a labor for the glory of God for that day. Okay? Did y'all get that? Just for that day. I'm not worried about tomorrow. I'm worried about right now. Am I doing what he's asking me to do? He said the obstacles which appear insurmountable will gradually grow less and less. Or should I encounter all that I, has fe I have feared, the grace of Christ will be imparted to me according to my need. 
Strength increases with the difficulties met and overcome. The only way I can meet those is I'm going with Christ surrounding me with angels. I can meet anything with that. He put a hedge of protection around me. I can meet anything with that. It don't make no difference what you bring my way. He's already covered me. This is this hope that we're supposed to be living in. Let's understand that. Let's move forward, not only as individuals, but as a church. Let's let God do his perfect work. And stop doing it on our own. And stop letting man dictate what he thinks we ought to do. Isn't that what's going on? Man is dictating what he thinks we ought to do. Man is putting scenarios out there so we can get caught up and get distracted from the work. This work don't change. Regardless if we're distracted or not, this work don't change. We still have to complete the work. And the only way we can do so is with a pure heart and a pure mind and understanding this work is not ours. It's him going through us to get it completed. Okay? All right. <laughs>